Hello and welcome to Strip Panel Naked. I'm Hass and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. This episode I wanted to speak specifically about making impactful or subtle page transitions. I was inspired primarily by The Suicide Forest by El Torres and Gabriel Hernandez Walter, originally a Spanish comic but translated under the Very Good Europe Comics imprint. As people who watch this channel regularly are aware, I am a huge fan of Gabe Walter, and no exception here. But what really caught my eye was the way Walter and Torres handle the page transitions, almost on every single scene change in the book. They're done in a way that ties the story together in a very satisfying way, sometimes through the use of repetition, and sometimes through actively working against the visuals established previously. So this episode, I'm going to dive into two transition styles that are very successful in the book, and why they work so well. The first is by using replicating or symmetrical imagery. And we see this fairly early on, it's actually the first scene into the second scene, where the first scene ends with a book taking off in flight from the sign that the workers have put up in the suicide forest. It's a run of four panels on a single tier that begins with the workers, then leads into a three panel sequence of the book taking off and disappearing from the page. Noticeably, it's moving left to right, actually leading off the page for the reader to kind of go with it, left to right as the reading order is. And on the page after, we see the same visual setup of those four panels in the tier, and the book coming in from the left side, flying into the right, the same direction it left the previous page in, and landing on the sign before sparking, either glowing or meeting its death on the sign, but a dramatic shift in its appearance for that moment. That floating grace switching to something more bombastic, being a nice metaphor for what happens to characters in the story. Why it works though is by continuing a moment from one scene to another, and beyond just getting the sense that maybe this second scene isn't taking place that far away from the forest geographically, it's a way of making the seams and the joins in the story imperceptible. By making the transition from that one scene to another become a piece of linking movement, it's like an L or J cut in cinema, where the sound of one scene runs under the sound of another momentarily, making the transition all that more seamless. This is a really, really great example of something similar in comics. We caught up in following this bug, and so we're naturally led straight into the scene. It does offer two small moments of silence, one which is at the very end of the previous scene, and there's a single panel that's empty, and it's mirrored exactly by the first panel on the next sequence, both in terms of it having no movement, but also in how it uses the edge of a sign in the same placement to kind of create a similar visual, and in doing that it becomes less jarring to us as readers. But what we also get is imagery that continues from one scene to another under the guise of being part of the same scene, but actually not. That probably sounds more complicated than it is, but a few scenes later we're presented with a ghost of a dead man in a suit, white shirt, black tie. He appears ghostly with this scratchy, vaguely translucent effect on him as rendered by Walter, and in some ways it feels like we're about to witness something horrific happen. So when we turn the page, we are greeted with a panel of a man in a suit, black tie, white shirt. The visual language of this man dressed as he is actually carries over from that one page to another, one scene to another. And that's really clever from a horror standpoint, because it's like a fake scare while also asking us to question the relationship of these two men being placed against each other, but it's a transition that uses our fear of the man to do a version of a graphic match cut to this alive man bringing us into a new scene. The similarities are enough that we've moved somewhat gracefully across from one scene to another, while also adding something to the story and the experience of the story. Which leads nicely into the second example, so this is one of opposing imagery. There's a scene transition that is a year jump, showing the development of the couple who are in love in this scene. The words, I don't want this night to ever end, placed with this wide shot of them at the restaurant. It's a deep shot and there's nothing with immediate focus, there's nothing really particularly large in the frame, everything is quite small. But you can see that it's kind of showing the body language and how close they are together in the centre of the panel. Human features from the previous panel have gone and removed and it's so much more about the body language here. It's small, it's subtle and it's a very visually quiet panel. But when you turn the page, you're given the very opposite of that, visually and in the story. A huge close-up shot of the woman, pure emotion, screaming directly at us as the reader. It couldn't be more different than what we've seen previous, which works as a huge dramatic transition because it hits us even harder as a totally unexpected moment that flies in the face of the moment we've just seen. This is the opposite of the way the previous transitions have worked because rather than gently guiding us from one scene to another, this has the camera or the framing pulling away from them before slamming back into a really tight shot, aiming to emphasize the difference between the two moments as much as possible in a very, very, very unsubtle way purposefully. Another moment like this comes in the second issue, and this is probably more of a traditional example of a harsh direct scene change. 
We go from the reveal of the ghost version of the woman we saw from the previous example with this big splash page and into a page that is visually incredibly different. From big splash to six panel page. From close up to wide landscape scenery. From deep blue and red to soft greens and pastel blue. Everything about the visuals here is dynamically opposed once again. And so the stark horror of the previous image is both offset and then reinforced by the softer nature images that we're then presented with. Both scenes are elevated by the comparison to one another, and so we feel more receptive to the lush greens because of what we've previously seen, while at the same time, the horror imagery feels so much more powerful because of where we move to. And it goes to show that scene transitions can be done in quite a few ways, even just within the same story, and they each work to add or subtract something from the experience. Sometimes you want to lean into a transition that seamlessly moves you from one to another, and building in an action that leads you nicely from one to the other can be a way to distract the reader from the change in a very subtle way. It's almost like magic when the magician speaks to you to distract from the sleight of hand. But sometimes you want that hard crash that a sudden shift in location can bring. If you start to understand the needs of your scene transitions within your story, then you can learn how to make those work for you and make much more impactful moments in the joins between your scenes. Thanks for watching. This episode was, as always, made possible by the patrons at patreon.com slash stripppanelnaked. For their support, they get brand new exclusive content every single week from me too. Check it out if you'd like to support the channel. You can get my comics magazine at panelxpanel.com and I'm on Twitter at HassanOE. Finally, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes and I'll see you next time.